In the previous video, we derived this formula for differentiating an integral, an integral that where the function has more than one variable and where the limits on the integral are not constants, but they are some function. And again, this was derived in the previous video. Um, you can find our videos. The playlist is at the website, digital-university.org. If you click on free calculus videos and then scroll down to where it says differentiation of integrals, um, that's where you'll find this series. And we spent three different videos now where we developed the Lebon's rule for differentiation of an integral, and this was the most general expression. So in this video, what we're going to do is apply this to a specific problem. And here we have this. We have the integral of the square root of 1 minus t squared dt. The limits are from cosine of x to the sine of x. And we want to take the derivative of this with respect to x. Now, as we pointed out in our previous videos, this will be some function of x. If we differentiate this, it will give us a function of t, but then for t we substitute in cosine of x and sine of x. So this will be some function of x. Now, how do we find the derivative of that integral? So let's just go ahead and look at the formula that we developed in the last video. Notice, first of all, this is a function only of one variable, of t. So here, the first step where we take the, deriv the differentiation process inside of the integral to differentiate with respect to x, well, of course, here, that would just give us 0. There, there is no x. There are no x terms here. So since this integral is a function only of t, not of x and t, this very first term then is 0. Now what about for the next terms then? We have it will equal f of x t, f of x, v of x. So we go to here. This is our f of t. The derivative of this will equal f of x v of x. So in place of t squared, we put in v of x with his, the sine of x. So that derivative equals the square root of 1 minus the sine squared of x that right there is our term f of x v. All we did was, this is f of t. Now where it says t squared, replace it with this. Then we have to take the partial of v of x with respect to x. So now we're going to have, well, we can just say d sine of x. dx. Then we have minus, not f of xt, but f of xu. So we place t squared with this. And that's the term f x, u. All we did was just replace the t squared with u. So we have this, but then we have to take the derivative of u of x with respect to x. That's this. We have the derivative, the cosine of x, with respect to x. So before we continue this, let's just go back. We realize that for our simpler problem, this term is 0. 
So this is a function only of t, so we have to consider only these terms. So we have f of x, v of x. Well here then what this means is that for our problem, whatever this is, replace it with this. Then take the derivative of this with respect to x. And that's this term. Then it's minus our function, only t squared is replaced with this. And then we have the partial of u of x with respect to x. We can just say derivative cosine of x with respect to x. So now, we can say this will equal, that's the cosine of x, and the derivative of the sine of x, that's the cosine of x, times the cosine of x is the cosine squared of x. This is the sine of x. This is minus the sine of x. So these together give plus sine squared of x. Of course, that just equals 1. So the derivative of this integral with these limits comes out to equal 1. And again, the way we obtained that was just following this formula that we developed in the last video. Only here it was a simpler problem because the, the uh, formula that we developed in the last video was when we have a function of more than one variable. This is only one variable. So for our problem here, this term came out to be 0, and we had to consider only these two terms here in order to get the derivative of our integral. Um, in the next video, then, we'll consider a more complicated problem. And then what we'll do in the future videos after that is have some demonstrations where the original integral is so complicated that it cannot be integrated. But yet, if we can find its derivative, then with that information, we can go back and find a way to solve the original integral. So that will be coming up in future videos.